Beginning in 31 BC, the Pax Romana was a period of splendid prosperity for the great empire. Rome and its colonies enjoyed two centuries of peace and order, and the empire continued to grow in the second century, shifting eastward to add Mesopotamia, Syria, and Arabia. The empire now stretched 3,000 miles from end to distant end. Riches continued to pour in, the population grew. People lived longer lives, and the land was able to support them. It must have seemed as if Rome could go on forever. Prosperity is a quality difficult to measure. And even harder to pinpoint is the moment prosperity begins to fade. Did anyone, farmer, soldier, slave, or craftsman, mark the day the Roman Empire ceased to rise? Though far bigger than any other ancient city, Rome never grew much larger than one million people. After AD 106, the empire too ceased to expand. On one front, growth was halted by the Atlantic Ocean. In Africa, it was the Sahara Desert, a place Romans said had not a drop of water anywhere in ground or sky. To the north, climate set the boundary. Expansion went well into present-day Germany, but Romans never ventured far from land where they could grow olives and grapes. So the final push took them eastward. The last great conquest was Dacia, a rich empire in modern-day Romania. The Emperor Trajan's great victory there in 106 AD brought spectacular spoils back to Rome. Tens of thousands of slaves, 182 tons of gold, 165,000 tons of silver, treasure enough to transform the city of Rome. Grand new monuments were built, including the spectacular Trajan's Column, depicting every phase of the Dacian Wars. Treasure enough to stage the last great victory celebration, 35 days of non-stop games and parties. This great hall of spoils was spectacular and awe-inspiring, but it was also the last. Never again would splendor on this scale rain down on the empire. It was a grand and glorious time, a time of excess and celebration. But did anyone notice a few small but significant changes? Prices had been steadily creeping up, especially for two crucial expenses, grain and the military. Inflation is rampant. The government is desperately attempting to fund army by printing more money. Gold reserves are down, prices rose daily. You couldn't be sure of the real value of any of the money in your pocket. There were other small, almost unnoticeable signs of a change in the winds of prosperity. Ancient writers spoke of corruption and greed resulting from Rome's immeasurable wealth. Romans began to see extremes of wealth and luxury as a vice. But at the same time, a universal hatred for the tax collector made tax evasion something of a sport. 